regular sketch. Okay, I think we might end up seeing an answer coming in here. Let's keep an eye on the chat, everybody. I think we're going to see at least an answer, and, and we don't know if it's going to be right or not, but we're, we're at least going to be ready to receive that answer. We did already get a Rambrose with a got it. We got an Aaron C with a got it. Yep. I don't know Dom with the got it. Yep. Who else do we have in here? And here we go. So Fully we got a defined of... coming in with an answer. 206 grams. That is not correct. That is not correct. Not within tolerance. So that's going to be one of his answers, potentially opening the door for titanium. But that is not correct. Not within tolerance. Expand it out so I can see. Yes. Please. All right. So a couple more fun facts we got here at the half is he also uses Fusion 360 for PCB design, and that's actually a pretty good one. I wonder if somebody's gonna come up with a PCB challenge. Has titanium screws, which I assume is why the nickname is titanium. Oh, the real nice. question would be is, did he design those screws, right? That's what I would love to hear. Yeah, great question. But outside of that, we got Crispy Co at us again. Uh, He's got his ID students at RMIT UNI for a decade. So that's a great thing. He's not only using the product every day, but it sounds like he's out there actually training the next generation. He also has a channel on SolidWorks for product designers. So that is a YouTube channel as far as I know, correct? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Fully defined. That's his username as well. And what we could do is, in the meantime, one of us will go ahead and put that link to his YouTube channel so you guys can go check that out. But I think we're ready to kick this off. Do you have the drawing already? Yeah, I have the drawing already. For Phil, I just wanted to say I know that we've got a, a lot of people in here watching right now. And I know that um, before the stream and even at the beginning of the stream, you mentioned you guys are running a promotion right now as well. Is that right? Oh, we are. I was going to save bragging about it until... Uh... My favorite this week is going to be Rambrose comes up, but <laughs> Autodesk does currently have a promo on Fusion 360 30% off. And myself over here at JIT CAD Cam, we have matched that 30% discount on all of our services as well. Support, training, and you can go check that out at my website as I am going to post in the chat here as soon as this drawing gets populated. Okay, awesome. And then we also include a link down in the description of this video. So if you guys want to stay in touch with Fusion Phil, if you need to get any of your fusion training or, or uh, any seats of fusion added to your arsenal, he's the one to talk to and his link is down there in the description as well. And, uh, and if you ever need him for co-commentary, you can also reach out to him for that. That's right. Feel free to call me anytime if you just want to chat. And Titanium did answer in the chat, said, ask my surgeon, but I'm glad I didn't design them. So there you go. He didn't design them. All right, cool, guys. And and Fully Defined says, our MIT University in Melbourne, Australia. He taught there for 10 years. Wow. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, guys. Well, let's get into it here. This next match between Titanium, our number five seed, running inventor, from Colombia, going up against Crispy Co., our number 11 seed, running SolidWorks from Australia. He's a certified SolidWorks expert. Let's get into it here. This next CAD vs. CAD battle begins in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part? The tolerance on this part is plus or minus one gram, and this part is called Slide Guide. It's made out of ABS. It's uh, 10, 20 kilograms per cubic uh, meter as the as the uh, density. So no inch part so far for these guys. And you can see here, it's like a it's like a little kind of like a tapered cylinder that's sticking up, and then it's got three ribs sticking off of it, and it kind of slides into some type of little pocket. Looks like both of our runners have grabbed a screen capture, so let's move over to this CAD versus CAD action. And it looks like they're both starting out with a sketch of a rectangle on the top plane. And this is what I like Definitely, to see. Yeah, it, 100%. It's, again, just shocking to me to see the thought process, the speed, a slot tool being used yep. again. We like the slot tool. Yeah. I tell you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it is. I mean, there is some things that the more I get to see, you know, SolidWorks, there's tools that I kind of wish I had, like the fast filleting of corners and a sketch level. That would be something great to see be brought over to our software. However, being the new kid on the block kind of scenario is everybody says do it more from a solid side, not from a sketch side, right? Mm. Well, that's, a, I mean, I like that as well. I mean, certainly if I was doing this as a, 
uh, not as a speed model, but if I was doing it as a, you know, an actual proper parametric model, I would do it using fillets at the feature level. And honestly, even when I am speed modeling, I think it's faster to do a, a squared, squared off rectangle and then add the fillets at the feature level anyway. You can see that what Crispy Co was getting there, he got a couple of errors that showed up because he had equals relationships on his lines. And then when he added the fillet, the equals relationship had to be broken. That can sometimes be catastrophic in the sense that it causes your sketch to completely error out. And so that's another reason why I actually prefer to add those fillets at the feature level rather than at the sketch level. Just leave your sketches simple. You don't look at all those relationships in Crispy Co's sketch. You don't want to sketch with all those relationships. That's way too much. 100%. That's what I tell people when I go through and design and help teach people to design is it's all squares and circles. That's it. You yeah. don't need to put all the fancy stuff on. There's a reason in the world of fusion, it's under the modify tab. Yeah, exactly. Draft and, and rounding off corners and filleting and shells and stuff like that. You can do that all at the feature level. Well, I got to say, it's very clear here that Titanium has drawn first blood in this match. He not only has that first rectangular base extruded, but he's already got that lower pocket with the appropriate wall thickness. So he is really pulling ahead in this one. But Crispy Co. did spend a lot of time adding geometry to that first sketch. Let's see if he's able to reuse that geometry and kind of speed up these next couple of features. I'm surprised nobody took another approach that I'm going to save until a little later. But it is one of those things that I think Depending on how fast you're moving, you may have just overlooked a simple thing that would speed this up. A hint to that to any of you out there in the chat would be is anytime you got to double up on something, maybe mm. the part can be defined once, not twice. Yes. Right? Yeah. Interesting. They both. Yeah, you're right. They both decided to go with the full model. Let's see. Uh, let's see how that works out for them in the end as well. So we see Titanium once again pulling ahead yet another feature in his model. He's got that tapered cylinder uh, pointing up there from the top on the 2D print. I think I was calling that out as uh, like diameter, whatever, boss. Um, and uh, there were several references to that. The ribs, for example, are supposed to touch off at the edge of that boss. So you can see here that in this uh, side view, there's these notes, the rib touches, ribs touch top edge of diameter 43 boss. So we'll see how our runners handle that as well. That's always a little bit tricky when, you know, when you've got a feature like that, and it doesn't have to be a rib. There's more than one way to create that geometry. But um, when you do have geometry like that, it's kind of touching off tangent to a cylinder coming up at an angle. That can sometimes be a little bit tricky and it can sometimes uh, tri trip up our runners. I can see how it could. I mean, it's definitely one of those things that it's very hard to not only make a part, but to make a part under pressure is crazy difficult. Yeah. And I think in my case, that's my part is it's not that I think I'm going to embarrass myself because I'm really good at that one. But to get on here and to be able to perform under pressure, deal with the struggle, how to actually undo what you've done, I mean, it's it's crazy to think at the end of the day, and these guys are definitely closing in on each other very quickly, as we're seeing in chat. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, it, it all of a sudden got really close. You know, I, I brought up that 2D print and I brought it back, and Crispy Co. all of a sudden has all those same features that that Titanium has, um, and is moving forward now with this rib. They're, look at this; they're both creating the same sketch at this. Oh no, he's creating that centered sketch. I thought they were both creating that rib at the same time. So we see Titanium taking a very, very good approach here, kind of coming in, creating that extra geometry, and then he's going to use that geometry to make sure that he's able to create the rib. That's what you've really got to do there. You got to you got to come up with some kind of a workaround because, you know, the customer might come to you and say, I want this rib to go right up to this, the edge of that circle. But the reality is that it that really can't be done. And so you're going to end up with a little notch there or you're going to end up with, you know, some extra geometry. And, you know, you just have to you have to take it back to the customer and say, like, is this what you wanted? And they say, yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted. You know, even though, you know, it, it's not not actually there. Fortunately, in these parts, there's enough of a tolerance to account for that. There's really two different ways you could solve that. You could have that rib, you know, sticking out a little bit the way Titanium's got it, or you could have it embedded in a little bit. Um, and either one would land within the tolerance of this particular model. Well, I tell you what, being on the downstream effect of this, like always, is I would love to see in chat by putting the number one is how often have you had a part, designed a part for a customer and went out there to manufacture it for somebody like me as a machinist to tell you, you can't make square corners on a part. So now you've <laughs> got to go back, add fillets, send it back to the customer, get it back again, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, look, the struggle is real. I mean, we, like you said, I think we are closing in super close, but again, I'm seeing two different methods for even creating that center guide feature, nonetheless, or the nozzle, as I would almost refer to yeah. it. Yeah. 
You have the layer cake technique that I teach as well as the revolve technique that is very common. And where to use it and when to use it really doesn't matter in the real world as long as you design the part. But today it could be a make or break item. Yes, indeed. And I got to give a shout out to Crispy Co. there. It looked like he was trying to create the rib using the rib feature in SolidWorks and it failed. It gave him an error. And he just said, you know what? I'm just going to do it as an extrude. And he even mirrored it across before he did the extrude. And he also showed his hidden lines so that he could make sure that the rib wasn't going to interfere with those hidden lines. Uh, very, very pro move there. That's somebody who's got some experience for sure. Well, if we go ahead and pull up the drawing one more time, I'm curious if this is a, a dose or a trace kind of feature that we're working with yeah it looks for anybody like, out there working at home it's hard to see in the uh, in the overlay but in the drawing you can see it is indeed a trace awesome yep so there's a third one there on the back and you know it's got it's got some different geometry that one on the back just because of where the the pocket is so we'll see what these guys come up with on this one but crispy co really closing in on this one titanium getting that extra drafted hole in the bottom also very close to finishing looks like he maybe just needs that one final rib there on the back. Crispy Co. trying to figure out how he's going to handle this feature. SolidWorks fighting him again. See what he ends up doing here. Maybe he'll add in a delete face as a crowd favorite. Oh, nope. He's just going to do it with a regular sketch. Okay, I think we might end up seeing an answer coming in here. Let's keep an eye on the chat, everybody. I think we're going to see at least an answer, and, and we don't know if it's going to be right or not, but we're, we're at least going to be ready to receive that answer. We did already get a Rambrose with a got it. We got an Aaron C with a got it. Yep. I don't know Dom with the got it. Yep. Who else do we have in here? And here we go. So fully we got defined of... coming in with an answer. Two, zero, six grams. That is not correct. That is not correct. Not within tolerance. So that's going to be one of his answers, potentially opening the door for titanium. But that is not correct. Not within tolerance. And his answer was two, zero, six. He needs to try again. And titanium now could potentially cinch the victory here. Crispy Co. coming in with an answer, 206 grams. That was not correct, not within tolerance. Um, I see the question there. I'd say I'm not going to display the drawing again just because I don't want to miss any of the action here. So I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. It looks like titanium coming in with an answer, 214 grams. That is, oh, sorry, 241 grams. That is not correct, not within tolerance. So now both of our runners have a chance to answer a second time. Your runners are allowed to answer incorrectly one time, but 241 grams is not correct, and 206 grams is not correct. So both of our runners now need to look through their model, see if they can't figure out uh, maybe what went wrong. Atze asking for the Clock of Doom. The Clock of Doom only comes up when one person is completely eliminated. If one per person answers incorrect twice, we will see the Clock of Doom. But wow, 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 what a matchup, what a model. Guys, shout out to the model. I tell you this what, week. I, I on my end too. It's very, very close, and I, I kind of feel that they're both missing something in the same spot. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling that too. Uh, it's funny you say that. I, I'm kind of feeling that too, and that's, you know, the way that this model was constructed. It's got some, uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, Weekend Wednesday pointing out that's a big discrepancy between the two of them. And W. Gibbon saying, this is a sweaty match. Yeah, I bet these guys, I bet these guys wish they had a, a 3D connection space mouse right now because I'm sure their hands are very sweaty. They maybe even are losing their grip on their standard mouse and they really need that, that advanced mouse. I tell you what, for anybody else out there that says they got it already, I'm, we should almost start something that's like the, uh, what is that? The wheel, not the wheel of fortune, but the price is right. Closest without going over. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aaron C says there's a particular dimension that is defined pretty oddly. Caught me out a little. Yeah. Yeah. These... Caught you out a little, but I mean, we're talking about 35 grams difference between the two. Yeah. These prints, these these prints were uh, not not the easiest to uh, to lock in on as I was going through and creating these models. Um, and so, you know, the the there are definitely some spots where I had to really. Uh, shift around some some geometry in order to kind of fit everything onto the print. So what's happening now is our runners are looking at the print, they're looking at that 2D print, and they're trying to figure out, you know, while going around the model, they're trying to figure out, like, what did I miss? They're going one dimension to the next to the next. What did I miss? What did I miss? What did I miss? Trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with this, this drawing? 
what what was it you know and, and that's what you have to do you have to kind of just go through one feature at a time kind of look back over everything that was going on in the original drawing and see if they can't figure out what they had missed but wow 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 what a close matchup here they're both kind of stumped on this one and uh, we're gonna give them a few more minutes we might have to you know occasionally we do bring up the clock of doom for both runners uh, just to make sure that the matches get to keep going so we're gonna we're gonna give them just a, another you know another couple of minutes to look through their models to figure it out before somebody commits to an answer and then we'll just have to bring up the the double clock of doom yeah we are we are definitely at the point of creating a model but the model is not right which is not going to get you paid that's for sure yeah yeah and that's the problem and that's the problem all right we see crispy co tearing around trying to come up with some some dimensions looking at all the dimensions on this thing remember this thing has a tolerance of plus or minus one gram plus or minus one gram and so uh, it is a kind of a tight tolerance i mean it is a plastic part so uh would it be cheating at this point to ask if either one of them was within 10 grams uh i think it might be cheating yeah that might be cheating <laughs> huh? even though we don't say which one is but are they close within 10. yeah All right. I'm just going to let these guys let these guys cook a little bit. See what they come up with. This might be the worst part is when you got the first answer wrong. Now you're on the line and both of you are at the point where you're modeled and you think everything is correct. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Fully defined in the chat saying, ah, Trying to figure out what's going on. Just want to mention we got 110 people in the chat. That is awesome. Yes, indeed. Let's go. Thank you guys so much for the support. Appreciate everybody being here today. It's fun to watch these runners going through, trying to figure out what's going on, what they maybe missed. We're watching the chat here. We're watching to see if one of these guys can come up with an answer. And Crispy Co coming into the chat. Looks like his revised answer is 211 grams. And Phil, we got ourselves a winner. Congratulations oh, to Crispy Co. Heading to the final four in the World Championship of 3D CAD Speed Modeling 2024. Congratulations to Crispy Co. I see what you mean, Aaron C. That was kind of an odd dimension on there, but wow, what a matchup between Crispy Co. and Titanium. Congratulations, guys. Huge shout out to Crispy Co. for locking down that win, for not giving up, for going through one feature at a time and getting all that geometry defined. And huge shout out to Titanium as well for putting up such a great battle throughout this entire thing. That was really great watching both of our runners. Congratulations, Crispy Co. He's a certified SolidWorks expert. Congratulations to Titanium. Uh, wow, what, what a matchup, Phil. I, I Hands down, very, very close. And as we saw, we got all the way to the end and it was nothing more than one little dimension that threw him off. So attention to detail always means everything. And at this point, it sounds like both guys get to go back to bed.